today. The question is, while you find Luke chapter 10, you can rest your back on the pew. <clears throat> I haven't seen you in over a year, look like. You done jumped up on the brother. Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> Here's the question. What is your preference? Luke chapter 10. What is your preference? People make decisions in their lives and they determine based on the decisions what they want to do or not do. Who they want to be like, who they don't want to be like. And so today, what is your preference? Now I want to add to that. <clears throat> do you want to be a Christian? Do you want to be a deacon? Or do you want to be a good Samaritan? Now I know that you've been born again. I get that. So if you've been born again in Jesus Christ, that makes you a Christian. But how do you define what a Christian is? Jesus is not concerned about you doing as much as he's concerned about you being. And if you be, then you'll do. Yeah, can I get somebody to say amen? Let us stand in the presence of the Lord. This is a very different passage of scripture to read for uh, as part of a deacon's ordination. But if y'all get on the bus with me today, we're going to take a ride. Greyhound had a model that they says, get on the bus and leave the driving to us. My us is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So leave the driving to us. Now, when we, when you, if you, if you pay attention Sometimes when you're on the highway or even on a bus, the bus every now and then is going a specific route or route or however you want to refer to it. But they come across things and they have to make a detour. So every now and then I may make a little detour, but you stay on the bus. Because as I make the detour, I, I, I may make the detour, but I'll get back on the route that we need to go to to get to the end of where we're going but just get on the bus now and leave the driving to us Luke chapter 10 beginning at verse 25 says on one occasion an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus teacher he asked what must I do to inherit eternal life what is written in the law, he replied, and uh, <laughs> he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. Listen, but he ain't wanted to justify himself, so he, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Good question, good question. In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Uh, and then it said, so too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Uh, then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarius, den der denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper, look after him. 
He said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him, Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Our Father, in the name of thy son, Jesus, for a moment, please allow me to share your word, to, to, to teach your word, to, to preach your word, that they may have a better understanding and have a, a clear understanding of what their preference is in this life in which they live for you. Bless now this moment in Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What is your preference? Uh, Christian, deacon, or a good Samaritan? Work with me only if you can. Uh, say amen when you agree. And uh, a young lady by the name of Shalia uh, Allwine recently wrote an article. Recently, as of July 10th, on the seven traits of a gospel-centered good Samaritan. A gospel-centered Good Samaritan. And when she wrote this text, as we know, the story of the Good Samaritan was told, has been told centuries and centuries as an example of how to care for others and meet their needs in obedience to Jesus. Uh, you, you would understand that uh, uh, command to love God in all, with all your heart and, and soul and mind and strength and to love your neighbor as ourselves it is a parable a physical story with a spiritual lesson uh, while the, the the emphasis is on meeting a person's physical needs she believed the greater application is acting in response to the spiritual need for salvation and i concur with that why there is more than one spiritual lesson when we take a close examination of this parable that's why I chose to use it today for your ordination service. And it said that would teach us how to be gospel centered good Samaritans. A lot of us got that jacked up. We say we believe in Jesus Christ, but do we uh, uh, do, uh, do uh, are we really being like Christ? Thus, my question, what is your preference? Do you want to be a Christian? Yeah, you, you got that when you believe in Jesus Christ. Do you want to be a deacon? Well, you just got that because you got to ordain. Or do you want to be a good Samaritan? Something has to have a preference. You have to make a decision about who you're going to be now in Christ as a deacon. Who you're going to be as a Christian. And if you don't know Jesus and you want to become to know Jesus, now is your opportunity to come to know Jesus and become a believer in Christ. But there's some things that go along with it. Are you on the bus? Uh, uh, Luke 10, 30 to 37, my fellow red letter Christians and brother Raymond, Jesus replied and said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was going down and he fell among robbers and they stripped him and beat him and went away and left him half dead. You know the story. Uh, the, the, the priest came by, passed him by. The Levite came by and passed him by. But a Samaritan. Now, now, let me put this in perspective. This Samaritan uh, was uh, related to the Jews, but the Jews and the Samaritans hated one another. They did not get along with one another. And what I like about this, uh, this Samaritan, he wasn't being racial. He was being a child of the king. Help me, somebody here. When you said uh, on this journey and he poured oil and put wound bandages on him and, and on the next day he took care of took him on his donkey and took him to the inn and he said if you got any more expenses I would take care of it which of these which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man and, and it's pretty obvious the Samaritan proved to, be, proved to be a neighbor because he took care of the man who was in need. Have I got a witness here? The Bible says, love the Lord my God with all your heart, mind, soul, and love thy neighbors yourself. Sound good, but how? It sound good, but how do you do it? Uh, are you on the bus? Follow with me. Uh, 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 six uh, Sister Shalia shared seven ways to be ready to meet others. Seven ways I want to put in your spirit. Seven ways I want to put in your spirit to meet others. Needs when you, when we look at the overview of the parable I previously read, we find uh, the, 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 the trip in 1038, a man is going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. The Jericho road was a dangerous road. You have been ordained a deacon and you are now on the Jericho road. And this Jericho road that you are now on is a dangerous road. 
Because God see you a little different now than he see others. God expect things from you that you have never even thought would even come across your way. Things will happen in your life on this Jericho Road. I told you, you better talk to Deacon Bailey and let him share some things to you. People who you thought were your friends will not be your friends anymore. People who you thought love you will not love you anymore. People who would come around you, they're not going to come around. And then you're going to have some say, I remember who you used to be. And, 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 and I think you the same way you used to be. Well, I, I, I'm just putting a little bit on you, but I want you to understand here, this journey on this road of darkness is a dangerous place. The trouble in 1030B shows up. He is attacked by some. You will be attacked by many. And those of you who are believers, you know what I'm talking about. You are attacked many different ways. And those of you, once you come to know Jesus, Jesus people will come at you from a whole different perspective. Because they don't believe that you changed. They don't believe that God has blessed you. They don't believe that you believe in Jesus Christ. So they will challenge you and tempt you. Work with me only if you can. Uh, the text goes on and, and, and you understand they have robbed him on the joy. Robbed him of his joy, robbed him of his peace, and they thought you he were dead. Beat you down and cared nothing about you. No one thought you would become something in life. Uh, Brother Raymond, who, who would have known that you would have this day or win? Because you said even down there, you never would have thought it. Right there, just today, he shook his head. And when I said what he said, he never would have thought that he would have been a deacon in this church. Somebody ought to talk to me if you can. I never thought I would have been a pastor, but here I am. I wanted to be a pastor, but I didn't know I would be a pastor of this church. And here I am. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to be no pastor. I, I wanted to do what I was doing. Just like you at one point in time, you just wanted to do what you were doing, not being bothered. But God came by. And when God come by, your whole attitude changed, won't it? Uh, if you don't, if you can't answer, yes, ask her. She'll tell you. She never would have thought. She'd be sitting down there with you, and you never would have thought you'd have been holding her hand. I don't know why you let it go, because you're going to show need it later on. <laughs> Work with me only if y'all can now. From a gospel perspective, the man lying on the side of the road could also represent an unbeliever. Someone who does not have personal relationships with Jesus. People without Christ are in great need. They have been robbed of the truth and, 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 and are victims of our enemy and, and, and desire to steal, kill, and destroy. It's sort of like the mis, 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 uh, information about COVID-19. Anybody who would put that kind of information out that was, uh, wouldn't encourage people to go get that shot, they want to steal kill and take your joy y'all ought to hear that now y'all y'all didn't hear what i just said yeah because they're saying if you because 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 if you don't get that shot yeah, it's pretty obvious that it's on the rise again because but i mean they don't they don't care about you uh, and so here we go here the the, the 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 merciful response of the good samaritan illustrates seven principles seven and i'm and i'm gonna be through we need to incorporate into our lives seven principles we need to incorporate in our lives. So when we, so when we happen upon others by God's sovereign plan, and you're going to run across people, and you're going to be taking care of people in your district by God's sovereign plan, and, and God, you're going to need to know what to do. And so then, we, we will be ready to listen to the Holy Spirit as he prompts us to speak and act. Deacon Raymond, these seven ways, and church, these seven ways to be ready for your leadership and to be part of the ministry in any church uh, are very important. Number one, we must see others with the eyes of our hearts. See, see, you can't look at people and judge. Help me, somebody. Uh, the Bible makes it very clear. You need to look at the log in your own eye before you look at the speck in somebody else's eye. And the only way you can do that, you got to look at people with your eye from your heart and not from your mind. Because your mind will always deceive you, but your heart never will. The Bible says the most evilest thing that you have in you is your heart. But if your heart is right with God, you will see people from your heart and not from your eye. Y'all ought to talk to me here. How many times do you pass by people without consciously seeing them? We throw up a hand to wave or call out good morning, but we don't really take time to see the person. Jesus told his disciples that a hard 
hardened by unbelief prevented them from having spiritual insight. Help me here that you find that in Mark 8 and you find that all three of the men, uh, uh, the, Luke 10, the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan saw the man lying on the side of the road having hard hearts. The priest and the Levite went on the other side. But the Samaritan who had a right heart took care of of the man the marathon saw his need from his heart we must see people from our heart not our eyes as jesus who searched their heart what is your preference when you see people what is your preference do you see people from your heart or are you looking at them from your eye i get so sick and tired when i hear people talk about people who are homeless you think some people all people choose to be homeless you think they don't want it and some of them are smarter than I am some of them have PhDs walking the street maybe they have a mental health problem I don't know maybe they have some other kind of problem but you got to see people from your heart and not from your eye if they're hungry feed them if they're naked clothe them if they're sick visit them we must see others with the eyes of our heart we must feel compassion towards others. Most likely the Samaritan had suffered rejection in his own life, and he had. The Jews couldn't stand him. As a matter of fact, let me, let me put this in perspective. Let me take a detour for a moment, and I'll get back on the bus with you. We'll continue to ride. Do you remember the story when Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well? Well, normally, when Jews came to the Samaritan territory, rather than going straight to Samaria, they hated them so bad, they were walking all the way around. But Jesus came and he walked right through the middle of the Samaritan territory and came to the well. And the Samaritan woman was standing there and he asked her for something to drink. And when she asked him for something to drink, she said, well, how are you going to get the water from the well? It's about 135 feet deep or more. But how are you going to get the water? And you, and you ask me, a Samaritan, to give you, a Jew, something to eat? Jesus said, don't get racial with me. I'm not here trying to get racial with you. If you knew who was standing here you, and you were thirsty, I would give you water for your life. You must have some compassion. Have I got a witness here? Uh, but he had personal experiences that moved him to act with compassion. They hated Samaritans. But here's a Samaritan coming along and the Jews, the Levites and the priests went around him. But because of his heart, because he had compassion on him, he served him as believers. We must never forget that our condition used to be before we met Christ. You remember who you used to be, don't you? Oh, y'all too darn quiet right now. I didn't say nothing wrong. Let me help you. I'm going to get back on the bus with me. I'm going to drive the bus in your driveway for a moment. And I'm going to park it there for a minute. Do you remember what you used to do? Do you want me to start naming some of this stuff? Or I'm going to get an amen. Yeah, Pastor, I remember what I used to do. You know, that stuff you want to forget, but it's still stuck in your brain still. Y'all ought to talk to me now. Huh? That house you went to, you had no business going to. Y'all want to talk to me now? That club you was hanging out in and you shouldn't have been hanging out in it. That liquor you drank, you shouldn't have drank it. That smoke you smoked, you shouldn't have smoked it. That dope you took and you shouldn't have taken it. Y'all want to talk to me now? Or do I need to stay up in your house? For Can I back the bus up out of your driveway now and go on down the road? Go on down the road. All right. Go on down the road. According to Ephesians 2, 1, 2, 3, we were dead in our trans trespasses. We were dead in our sins. And we live according to this world in disobedience to God. We were separated from God and had no hope. Brothers and sisters and Brother Raymond, never forget if it had not been for the Lord on your side. Y'all hear what I'm saying here? If it had not been God who saw something in you that you did not see. In your, if it had not been for God. Who looked beyond your mess. Looked beyond your stupidity. Looked beyond your sin. Looked beyond your trespasses. And sent his only son down to save a sinner like me. 
Talk to me only if you can. Number three, we must make a personal touch. You got to have a personal touch. I ain't talking about the Midas touch. A personal touch. The Samaritan bandaged up the man's wounds and poured oil and wine on his injuries. I never did go back and research the oil. The wine. I understood the oil, but I didn't go back and research the wine part. Uh, so I, 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 but, but, I, but, 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 but he did it. But very often, meeting the needs of others can be messy. As Christians and as leaders in the church, as ministers in the church, as a deacon, sometimes uh, meeting the needs of others can be messy. Let me help you out. Uh, be careful, because people will will tell you they got a problem. Be lying. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, uh, people will tell you a half story. They don't want to tell you the whole story. I've been at this for 38 years. Brother, they would tell you some story. I don't know no new story they can come tell me now at this point in time. They, they may be one, but I don't know. And, and, and they'll make, man, they are convincing, brother. They will tell you. But, but, but here's what it says. We may have to get our hands dirty sometimes. The Samaritan made a personal touch by ministering healing to the injured man. And sometimes we may have to dip and dab in there to really heal somebody. But if you can't do it, you talk to your chair. If your chair can't do it, they'll talk to me. I can't do it. We go find some professional help. But people need help nowadays. Jesus illustrates this in Matthew 8, 3. Here's what he said. Remember the leprosy? Was the most uh, feared disease in the New Testament culture? Listen here. I don't want COVID-19. And I don't really want to go to the hospital and visit people with COVID-19. But I have to go sometime. See, that's getting your hand dirty. I I don't really want to go to the hospital and visit people with all this going on. And they shutting the hospital down. But my members get sick. I have to go sometime. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's getting your hand. That's doing what Jesus did. Jesus went to the leprosy. Now, faith is not stupid. Don't get me wrong. You need to go in there and protect yourself and do everything you need to do. It's not stupid. But listen to the text. He said lepers were required to live outside the city and cry out, unclean, unclean. Whenever anyone approached them so that no one else would be infected or made unclean, yet Jesus showed such compassion to one leper, he asked to be made clean. Now, let me put something in perspective. Y'all remember when the AIDS crisis came out? People were scared to death. They, 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 they were looking at people sitting next to them and looking at people sitting behind them and looking at people sitting in front of them. And, and then when COVID-19, the same thing came again. They were scared to death. Man, you got, you coughing, you, you, you moving. Y'all don't talk to me. Uh, you, you, you coughing, they stepping back away from you. You, you coughing, they running the other way. But, 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 but when God is, is but, but sometimes you have to take precaution, but sometimes in order to do this work for God, you got to mend and take care of people. Here's why. Here's why. From this parable, we learn three principles about loving our neighbors. Number one, lack of love is often easy to justify, even though it is never right. Number two, our neighbor is anyone of any race, creed, social background, or LBGTQ who is in need. Number three, love means acting to meet the person's needs. Wherever you live, needy people are close by. You ain't got to do them walk on the the corner. No, you ain't got to walk in the corner. Walk out to church. They pass by here every day. And and, and so, so, so there's no good reason for refusing to help people. However, people have to be open to the help you can provide. So what is your preference? Do you want to be a Christian? Do you want to be a deacon? Do you want to be a good Samaritan? Ah, Number four, I'm almost through. We must give up our own comfort. Uh, Brother, I'm telling you right now. There's been times I've been home. I was sitting down to eat dinner and I get a call. There's been times when I was uh, coming to the church, I had my day planned out, what I wanted to get to the church. I got a call on the way to church, and I got detoured, whether it was a nursing home, whether it was a hospital or somewhere else, because problems come up. And so as a team and as members of the church and as ministers in the church, we have to be open uh, and understand that we have to give up our own comfort sometime. The Samaritan was on a journey with an intended destination. 
He put the man on his own beast, willing to give up his own comfort and change his plans to meet the needs of the man who is in trouble. That's what we have to do as believers, as, as Christians. We have to be able to give up our own comfort. The apostle Paul is a wonderful example of a man willing to give up all worldly comforts in order to spread the gospel. Second, first, second Corinthians 1, 3 through 7, he describes the relationship between affliction and comfort, explaining that God expects us to leverage our uncomfortable experiences to bring comfort to others. Brother Rice, Paul experienced burdens so harsh that he despaired of life. He, 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 yet, yet he used these experiences to comfort and serve the people to whom he was sent to save, to share the gospel. He gave up a comfortable life as an honored Pharisee. He was the top of the line. He was well trained, trading his position of earthly success for a life spent traveling, tent making, and preaching. He did what was necessary to care for those who needed to hear about Christ. Always take every opportunity you can as a Christian. Always take every opportunity you can as a believer. Always take every opportunity you can as a deacon or a deaconess to share the word of God with somebody. Well, Jesus gave up his comfort. Laying aside his glory to bring salvation to us. We are called to imitate his attitude. And therefore, in a, in a few, I'm going to give you your certificate. And when I give it to you, there's a little button in there that says endure. And uh, that button is a reminder that you have to endure in order to mature. And when people see you and see that button, you don't have to just wear it on Sunday. You can wear it seven days of the week. When they see that, they will look at it and say, what is that button about? That's a clear opportunity for you to share. Well, I've learned in my life. In order for me to be something for Christ, I had to endure to mature I had to go through something with my family I had to go through something uh, with my children I've had to, to go through something with my wife I've had to go through something with my homeboys but if you got the Lord on your side it doesn't matter about what you've been through you'll find that the Lord will make a way. Have I got a witness in here that the Lord will make a way out of no way? So you must be generous. Number five, when the Samaritan arrived at the inn, he opened his wallet. I believe it was Deacon Bailey yesterday. He asked you, he said, what three pocketbooks help me somebody here <laughs> must you have <laughs> have I got a witness here <laughs> and Deacon Bailey said to you you got to make sure you got your hymn book have I got a witness here he said I really want to preach but I got to get you uh, I got to get all of this out to you <laughs> he said uh, you got to have your bible and he said uh, you gotta have that wallet have I got a witness here and it says here that the Samaritan was generous maybe you can catch it now that I'm still on the bus and taking you on this ride it said that the Samaritan uh, he went to the inn didn't he do it uh, and he said when he got the man to the inn uh, he paid for him to, to be comforted overnight and he said out of his pocketbook that uh, if uh, whatever expenses the man may have don't worry about it uh, I'll be back tomorrow and I'll take care of whatever expenses there are 
So never go anywhere without your pocketbook. Never go anywhere without your Bible. And never go anywhere about your hymn book. Because you'll always remember now a charge to keep our have, a God to glorify. You will always remember what a friend we have in Jesus. Have I got a witness here? The Bible says, number six, we must be involved. We must involve others. You have a district uh, that you're going to be taking charge of. Uh, and in the church, uh, you have to involve others uh, in what you're trying to do. Uh, if you're going to make a decision, uh, you should get some input. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, if you're going to do things, uh, you'll find uh, that God has given you all the talent uh, that you need uh, to accomplish his plan. Uh, now notice something here. Uh, I didn't say your plan. Uh, I said God's plan. Have I got a witness here? The Samaritan uh, recognized uh, he could not care uh, for the injured man uh, all by himself. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, we can do the work uh, of the Lord uh, by ourselves. Uh, Brother Raymond, uh, you cannot lead uh, and affect the district by yourselves that's why God gave you a helpmate have I got a witness here that's why God will give you instruments in a district here's the challenge for you and them brothers gonna look at me a little funny but I think that when you get your district your district should become the number one district in this church but you gotta work at it you got to want it. Uh, that's a challenge uh, for the rest of them. Uh, uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, I want to go on now. Uh, number six. Not only must you uh, involve others, uh, but number seven, uh, we must be willing uh, to show mercy. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, somebody uh, in your district uh, are going to make a mistake, uh, but I stopped by to tell you, uh, let me make uh, a detour uh, in your life. Uh, do you remember uh, you made a mistake, uh, but the Lord, uh, he still kept you. Uh, you remember uh, you didn't do right but the Lord uh, still kept you uh, everything uh, the Samaritan did uh, for the injured man uh, can be summed up uh, in this word uh, mercy uh, I heard uh, mercy uh, is showing kindness mercy is showing favor and I'm about through when it is not earned or deserved in other words even if they didn't deserve it show them mercy why is that because the same man by the name of Jesus I did not deserve mercy I did not deserve his grace have I got a witness here but he showed me mercy and he showed Showed me great and he gave me favor you are now in a position you got to show mercy Jesus taught we receive mercy when we ourselves are merciful blessed are the mercy and Matthew 5 and 7 for you shall obtain mercy Jesus didn't write that he didn't pin that he didn't fix that just to be saying something have I got a witness here but God being rich in mercy those words should cause us to look at others uh, in the eyes uh, of mercy. I'm about through now. Christians and deacons are Samaritan in English means a charitable or helpful person. And in the Hebrew and Arabic, it is a girl's name for a watchtower. I stopped by to tell you, you are a watchtower now. As a leader in this church, and you got to watch and keep the devil away from the church. Keep the devil away from the members. Keep the devils away from the brothers and from the sisters. 
sisters uh, and keep the devil away uh, uh, from your pastor when you see trouble come uh, you gotta be like Ezekiel uh, you gotta sound the trumpet uh, that pastor uh, there's trouble on the way uh, but I got your back uh, deacons and deaconess there's trouble on the way but I got your back church members I see some trouble coming but I got your back I have I got a witness here it's coming brother you can count on that but I stopped by to tell you when you show mercy God will show you mercy Satan attacks and look after them and love them and serve them come now as I really close this thing help when someone needs help race should never be a matter be kind even to your haters help without expecting something in return help mentor and correct you everybody to donate to the poor and to the homeless make sure you are in the church the church services on a Sunday morning. The church services on Wednesday evening. Church meetings. Deacons meeting. District meetings. Home going services. And always love your wife the way Christ loved his church. Well, what is your preference? And now how shall we close this text? Church, Brother Raymond scored 100 plus on his written exam. He did well on the question by the deacons. Brother Raymond, I want you to leave this in your mind. I want you to understand Psalms 119. As I close, God said, Blessed are those who rub who are word, who are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. Beth said in Psalm 119 verse 11, here's how you choose your preference. Here's how the Samaritan did what he did in Psalm 119, verse 11. It said, I have hid God's word in my heart. If you got the word in your heart, you will choose the right preference. It won't be about being a Christian, it won't be about being a deacon. It'll be about serving the Lord. And when you serve the Lord, you'll serve other people. Do you want to be a deacon? Do you want to just be a Christian? Or do you want to be a good Samaritan? I stopped by to tell you, keep God's word in your heart. Your knowledge from your head is one thing. You had a hundred score. But it must move now from the score to your heart. So what you got here, it don't mean nothing if it ain't down here. Have I got a witness here? Don't worry about they say is. Don't worry about the hearsayers. Don't worry about the haters. Why do I say don't worry about the say is? You have a Samaritan heart. Don't worry about the hearsayers. You have a Samaritan heart. Don't worry about the haters. You have a Samaritan heart. And I declare God will. But I got a better heart to have you. That's the heart of Jesus. Jesus, he had a heart. He came down through 42 generation got off Judea of Bethlehem have I got a witness hat when he got off he stayed around for 33 and a half years I heard Mike Four. he said when Jesus came down he was birthed in a virgin 
by the name of Mary. Didn't he do it? I heard and I read that the birth, he came down to a virgin's canal. I heard and I read the text. He got off at Judea of Bethlehem. I heard and I read the text. Not only did he just get off, but he ministered to the leopards. He ministered to the blind. He ministered to those who were crippled and could not walk because he had the heart of God. He showed mercy and he showed love. Have I got a witness here? But the story don't end there. Until I fall out, because the story said God came down, and after He ministered, He took him to a red court. They marched him from one hall to the next hall. But the story does not end there. He had the heart of God. He went in that garden, and after they marched him, they took him hung him on a cross but the story don't end there I heard when they put him up there on that cross nails in his hand spike in his feet the story still don't end there I heard they took him down off that cross and put him down in a borrowed tomb but the story don't end there they put him in that tomb but early, early I say early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand but the story don't end there won't he come see about you if you know he will when you sick won't he take care of you I say yeah I declare he will make a way out of no way but the story don't end there and I'm glad that the story don't end there I found my rest in him I found my peace in him I found my joy in him I found my hope in him I found my healing in him won't he do it but the story don't end there he got all power changing power loving power hope power peace power oh I know he's a fight do you know he's all right I say do you know he's all right he's still a doctor in a sick room ain't he doctor in a sick room oh I know he's all right at the cross where I first saw the light the burdens of my heart roll away oh I know he's all right isn't he all right there is power I say there's power there's power I say there's power there's power in the name of Jesus he's a bright in the morning star he's a lily of the valley there's power hope power love power there's power oh I know he's all right something about that name something about that name so now what's your preference you gonna be a Christian digging digging this minister leader are you gonna be a good Samaritan because when you look at Jesus Jesus was a good Samaritan Doors, the doors, the doors, the doors, the doors, the doors of the church are open. Now you can choose to come and give.
Christ your life, but that means you're coming to become a good Samaritan. You're coming to serve others. You can move those chairs. And Deacon Raymond, you can you can have a seat. Stand right there. Deacon Raymond, you can walk with the brothers for the first time as a sign by that chair. You can go ahead and move those chairs out of the way. Pass me not, oh Jim. Oh Lord, hear my hum. Those of the church open, you may come as a candidate for baptism. You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience, but the day may be your day. This moment may be your time. Do not pass. I'm glad he didn't pass me by. Oh, I'm calling. Say, oh, say. Oh Lord, while 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 on others, while on us, not pass me. God bless you. Maybe you see as we prepare for our offering. Thank you for uh, working with us on that journey on the bus. I hope that you got something out of it. As we bring our tithes and our offerings now. P put in the work right away. Make sure he hold that basket up. <clears throat> right there in the center. Well, you'll be smiling for the next six months or so, so we understand. <laughs> now, in all reality, what was going on, you no longer have a divided house. You have. You won. That's good. May we pray, God, we thank you now for our tithes and our offerings that are coming. We pray that this may be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We ask you to bless those who have to give and bless those who desire to give but have not. In Christ's name, we pray. For those who are tuned in, you can go on our Facebook page or you can go to our website and you can give directly in our uh, church app uh, online uh, and cash app and you can Make your contributions directly online. We do thank you for your giving. We thank you for those here. Are there any guests here who was with, uh, came to see Brother Raymond be ordained? Would you be kind enough to just kind of stand up so I can see you? Okay, one. Yeah, thank you for being here with him. Two. There you go. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming and supporting him. He's a good man. He really is. Where's the basket at? Oh, she got it. He got it in his hand. That's right. I am sweating like a racehorse right now. Ah, uh, Brother Robinson.
be God's giving. Reach back here. Thank you. All right, Brother Raymond, you get that basket right there. Okay, God bless y'all. Thank y'all for worshiping with us today. If there are any guests, who is just your first time visiting with us, would you just please stand for a moment? First time visitors. Okay, so we thank you for being here with us. May we stand now. Uh, this is, uh, as you know, we had our nation service, so this is definitely not our norm. So we thank you for being here with us. Uh, next Sunday, uh, a returning son who's came home, Stephen Cooley, he will be preaching for us next Sunday. Sunday, so I pray that y'all. Uh, I need to see you before you go, okay? Everybody, let the church. Let the church. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church. Eternal God, our Father, now as we prepare to leave, I didn't say anything because Paul just asked for prayer. He didn't ask me to make what he was going through a public announcement. So I still won't share that with you, but what I will do, God, I will say thank you for delivering him from that surgery. Thank you for blessing him and his family and covering them. That he's now don't have to worry about that, what he was going through in his life. And I thank you for his presence with us today. I thank you, God, for Deacon Raymond, and who has now been ordained. And God, I thank you for every member of this church every guest that showed up today and anybody who's searching and trying to find a church home I thank you for them as well and so now God as we prepare to leave this place it is my prayer that these our people shall never ever leave your presence and I ask for a fresh and continual anointing of the Holy Spirit in their lives so that wherever they go somebody shall see Christ Jesus in them now 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 wherever our children are near and far we ask that you would bless them my, my grandson and my great grandchildren and his wife they they flew back to Germany God thank you for the time that they shared here with us it was a lovely moment God so we had never seen all our grandchildren all in one place at the same time and now as our granddaughter is getting ready to leave us this week. I'm asking you to put your hand on her and the rest of our grandchildren. I'm asking you to cover them wherever they are. I'm asking you to keep their hearts stayed on thee. I pray they shall hide your word in their heart. And I pray God that when Satan come up against them and he will. They'll be able to stand up on the word of God and say, for God I live and for God I will die. So check, bless everyone in our families near and far, no matter where they are. Now may the grace of our Father, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Lord may it rest, Lord may it abide with these our children, not just now, but now, henceforth, and forever, and all of God's children saying together, let the church say amen. Come on and lift him up now. What is your preference? Let the church. Don't forget, young people. 
We have a meeting here for you next Saturday, Saturday at one o'clock. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Young people, don't forget, I need all ushers, all choir members here Saturday at 1 p.m. for rehearsal. Uh, all young people. And parents, if you desire to have them to be with us, we ask that you would have them here as well. God bless y'all. Thank you for being here with us today.